Hello, Sam from Toolhut here today. Today, I've got a pretty interesting one for you, I think. Been a lot of discussion lately on a lot of forums about stable power supplies, which ones are the best. Um, at Toolhut, we're continually testing different equipment, trying to decide what we're gonna sell and what we're gonna not sell, what we're gonna avoid, etc., etc. And we're always looking for upgrades especially if the upgrade can come at a lower price. So we've always been of the belief that you get what you pay for, but we're learning more and more that that's not always the case. So today, we're gonna use, have some uh, power supplies that have been in the field. We've been using them. Um, a couple, One of them uh, was promoted by a company as being a stable power supply that we have not used in the field, but I kind of wanted to throw it in there into the mix just because uh, some people probably use them. Um, we have a power supply that we've been using in the field for uh, probably a couple of years. One of our mobile programmers has got a lot of use out of it, uh, hasn't let us down. Um, and then we got a brand new one. I was on another forum somewhere reading something and this uh, stable power supply came up and I'm pretty impressed with it. So uh, it has been given to one of my techs to use and we're going to do some more testing on it in a few months. Give it some use, give it some abuse. So stand by, let's see what we got. Hello, Sam from Toolhut here today. Today we have an interesting project that we're going to do. What I have is a battery charger, a good old, just a regular old battery charger, probably 20 years old. I have a Power Max. that I have used a little bit. It is not intended for uh, flash programming. It's just a constant power supply. I did a video on it previously. It is not, I would not use it for flash programming, but I kind of wanted to show you that. I also have a Fronius uh, 70 amp clean power supply. I have a Schumacher INC 700A and I have a new one. I got a new one in the mail today. Yesterday, I guess. It's the IOTA DLS 90. And that's the only one that's new. So I kind of wanted to just go through. Uh, the Schumacher is about a year old. The Fronius is probably three years old. Uh, so these are all used units, except for the IOTA. Uh, I was looking for a replacement or a backup or an addition uh, to my arsenal for flash programming. So I thought it would be a good time to go through the why it's necessary to have a stable power supply for programming. I did have a Medtronix uh, 50 amp uh, that is no longer here. If I can borrow that for a day or so, I may add that to the, to the video, uh, but don't count on it did a video on it previously and it was it was uh, horrible to say the least so with that let's get going let me show you what I got here so what I have they have a can do DLC Bob you can use any DLC Bob hooked up to the DLC I am going to um, my intention is to leave the key on of the vehicle. We're going to monitor pin 16, which is battery voltage. Uh, we're going to monitor AC ripple on pin 16. We're also going to monitor battery voltage. Uh, I'm going to set the voltage at all of the programmers at 
I think that's where the iota set, so that's what we're going to adjust the Schumacher and the Fronius to, so we're comparing apples to apples. We're going to have the headlights on on the vehicle, and we're going to have the key on in the vehicle. It has been charging for an hour or so uh, with my PowerMax, just to make sure that uh, we're starting with a good battery voltage. So, stand by. Okay, just so we understand what's going on here. So, the test procedures, we're trying to be as fair as we can here. So, the first test is going to be nothing more than just key on engine off. So, you kind of get a baseline for how much noise there is in this vehicle. The second test is a power max. Uh, it's not a programming battery maintainer, stable power supply, nothing like that. Uh, but there is a couple companies selling this as having that ability. Uh, so I wanted to throw it in here. Uh, the, sec the third one is our OTC labeled Schumacher INC700A. The third one is a Fronius. Uh, Fronius, in my understanding, is no longer available in the U.S. Uh, they may come up with a distributor in the U.S. Uh, at some point. We probably will offer this unit on our website if we can find a distributor. It's a fairly expensive uh, stable power supply though. The fifth one is the IOTA DLS90. This is a brand new unit to us. It's a fairly inexpensive for a stable power supply. If it does the job that it's supposed to, um, this will be a very good option uh, for people in the field. Uh, and it will definitely be available on my website if it performs the way that it's supposed to. And then the sixth test is everybody's got just a good old traditional battery charger kicking around the shop. Uh, this one's been kicking around my shop for a while. It's very abused. It's uh, just a, a good old battery charger. Um, so I just wanted to throw this in here just to see how noisy it can be. Uh, so... The whole idea here is we want to make sure we have as little DC ripple and AC ripple on all of these stable power supplies. So we're going to have a five minute break in between each of these tests. So the uh, maintainer will have to do the same job to get back to the battery voltage that it wants. And we're going to leave the key on, engine off during the whole thing uh, with the headlights on uh, just so we got a, a, a constant draw on the battery. All right, stay tuned. All right, so here we are. We got the uh, just the key on, engine off here, real quick. It's been sitting for about five minutes. We've got our Power Max here. I'm going to get this plugged in, see how it does. Again, this is not one for use for doing programming. Don't recommend it. It's set at 13 volts. And we got a little bit of an AC ripple here. And notice the kind of the fluctuation on the blue or the channel one as well. We don't have a nice flat line. When you're doing programming, you want this both of these lines just as flat as they can be. All right, so the next one is our OTC labeled Schumacher INC 700A. And notice how noisy it is when the when it's working really hard. To be fair, it does calm down uh, quite a bit as it stops working as hard. So I don't think the Schumacher is a problem uh, as long as you let it calm down a little bit. Let it get down to under 20 amps or so. 15 to 20 amps is probably ideal. But this was running on boost uh, when it first started. So, But still, I was pretty surprised how noisy it was. Uh, we've sold quite a few of these and this one's been in the field for uh, just over a year and you see that it does clean up the longer it runs the 
the cleaner it does get. So. And actually, just on the AC Ripple, the PowerMax was cleaner than it was, but the DC voltage output was cleaner. So it's kind of a combination of the two. Got to keep that in mind. But again, you want them just as flat as you can be. The next one is the Fronius. Fronius, is, in my understanding, is no longer available in the U.S., uh, there's not a distributor here in the U.S. for it. Uh, this is a super stable power supply. Uh, a bit on the pricey side as well, though. Uh, so this is one of those you get what you pay for, in my opinion. And we see that the voltage is coming up, and there's almost no... AC ripple at all. Almost hard to calculate here with my cursors. I am kind of surprised that it's not running quite 13 volts. It's set at 13.2. But again, it's super clean. I can set the voltage up, get some more volts out of it. The next one was the IOTA. Now this one really surprised me. This is a fairly inexpensive unit for stable power supplies and uh, this is how it was right from the get-go. It just is uh, clean as it can be from what I can tell. It's got a nice smooth DC voltage and it's got a nice clean AC voltage. Almost no ripple at all. And I will tell you uh, it's got two, two settings got a low voltage or and a higher voltage the AC ripple never changes and the DC that never gets any ripple it's always just as flat as it could be and I kind of worked this one a little bit I left the voltage on the car go way down uh, somewhere on the 8 volt range and just kind of played with it see if I could get it to get any noisier now this is a new unit I will be retesting this unit in probably six months or so once it gets uh, some use out of it, some abuse from being banged up in the car. So we'll see where this goes in a few months. But right now, I'm super impressed with it. It does not come with a set of cables. You have to put your own cables on it. I just used a set of jumper cables. I actually used the jumper cables that I had on the PowerMax. So I just pulled the jumper cables off the power max we are running it with the plug in it for the higher voltage also just for information it doesn't seem to hold a lot of voltage about 13.4 volts on the higher voltage range I messed around with this one for about an hour, just letting the car go dead, bringing it back up, changing voltage, stuff like that. So I was pretty impressed with it, but I wanted it to work. I wanted to see how it did with the fa its fans running. And now we got old Faithful here. This is the battery charger that's been kicking around the shop for a long time. And we can see it's just stupid noisy. Uh, lots of AC ripple, lots of DC ripple. This is what you don't want in, when you're trying to program a car because this leads to problems. So it's not stable. The, you can ruin a module. You can ruin the file that's going in it. You can corrupt it. Uh, makes it very hard to figure out what's going on with it. So definitely don't suggest that. All right. Thanks for watching. Thumbs up, thumbs down, suggestions, comments, suggestions. Uh, hit the bell if you want to be notified as I'm uh, releasing new things. Subscribe to the channel if you want to uh, learn some more about programming videos and repair videos and some unbiased, I would call them, uh, equipment videos. Have a great day.